This is Flip Gordon, and you are in the Wrestling Epicenter. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the interactive interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. So what you gonna do? Let me talk to you, dummies. Oh, yeah. You're where it's at. If you're smart like me, you gotta listen. And if you don't listen to it, I'll come out of your computer and body slam your ass. Don't be a Melvin. I will scar you. <laughs> Open your third eye. Woo! It's gonna be cool. Oh, what a rush. It's showtime! We had a lovely conversation. <laughs> to the interactive interview. Interactive wrestling race. Welcome to Interactive Wrestling Radio, right here on WrestlingEpicenter.com. I'm your host, your master of ceremonies, James Walsh, and this week we have a two-for-one special for you. We have the Impact Wrestling teleconference call with the machine, Brian Cage, as well as a Ring of Honor star for an exclusive interview, Flip Gordon. Flip Gordon is promoting Ring of Honor's Madison Square Garden event, which will be happening in April. Can't wait for that to happen. They sold out the garden, them and New Japan Pro Wrestling, which is just staggering, staggering to think that Ring of Honor and somebody outside of WWE is going to be playing to Madison Square Garden and sold it out in a half hour. Kudos to Ring of Honor for pulling off that coup. He also will be talking a little bit about Saturday's festivities at All In, um, which he's been campaigning on Ring of Honor Television to be part of with his book Flip merchandise, as well as Death Before Dishonor, because you have to figure his feud, Flip Gordon's feud with Bully Ray, is going to factor in to a match here at Death Before Dishonor, just like they did a few months ago on pay-per-view as well. Invite everybody to... Search your cable boxes. Search your direct TV boxes. Find Ring of Honor Television. There's a great match this week featuring Flip Gordon as he takes on Silas Young in a fantastic match. If you haven't seen it, search it out and find it. It's a lot of fun. Great match to watch. Two fantastic athletes having a fantastic match. Realistically, that's an episode that features three main event quality encounters. Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor will be going one-on-one -on, -one on the Chris Jericho Rock and Rager Cruise this October. Be sure and Google that information and find out more at ringofhonorwrestling.com and impactwrestling.com as the two companies go head-to-head. -head. Ironically enough, both Brian Cage and Flip Gordon will be part of the Rock and Rager. Hope you guys enjoy this interview and stay tuned for more from Interactive Wrestling Radio.
Want your advertisement here? Check out WrestlingEpicenter.com and shoot us an email. You can have your ad appear on our podcasts as well as on our website. Once again, check out WrestlingEpicenter.com and contact us. What's up, everybody? It's the Wolverine, the effing machine, Mr. GMSI, Brian Cage. Here you're checking out Interactive Wrestling Radio. Chris Jericho or Fozzy, and you're listening to the interactive interview. And remember, we are huge rock stars. Welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio. On the Newsmaker line with me right now is a Ring of Honor superstar, one of my favorite guys to watch. It's Flip Gordon. Mr. Gordon, are you there? I am. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. So I wasn't going to mention this, but I will. I am the product of a 35-year National Guard sergeant. So I certainly do appreciate your service to the country. And I wanted to kind of parlay that into wrestling. Did your discipline, the discipline you learned by being in the National Guard, help you transition into being a professional wrestler? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think the Army helped me more than just in discipline. Um, it helped me mature as a, as a person. It helped me grow up. It helped me learn how to deal with high pressure situations. Um, wrestling is very high pressure, and it's it's a very fast business. It's it's always go go go. Excellent. And uh, speaking of go go go, you really burst on the scene mm-hmm. really quickly with Ring of Honor. You got a contract very quickly. It seemed like the fans, which are not necessarily the easiest fans in the world to win over really adopted you as one of the Ring of Honor own, one of the Ring of Honor elite, pretty easily and pretty quickly. Thoughts on your whirlwind that ended you up with Ring of Honor so quickly into your wrestling career? Um, it, it's, I mean, it's been a fun journey. I mean, I just, I wanted to wrestle as much as I could, in this, and that's kind of what I did very early on. I started off just wrestling in the Northeast, and I always wanted to travel more. I always wanted to go further. I always wanted to wrestle new people. Uh, and I think while doing that, I was able to share the ring with many, many good guys, uh, probably before I should have had the chance to be in the ring with them, but I did. And I was able to learn at a very fast rate. And I think that's kind of what caught Ring of Honor's attention. Very cool. And about your name, uh, Flip Gordon, it kind of comes off the tongue. It sounds almost like an old school superhero kind of name. Mm-hmm. Maybe Flash Gordon pops into mind. Did that come to mind when you decided to choose that name? Um, I actually, it was really weird because initially I wanted to use um, my real first name, which is Travis. And so at first I started off as Travis Gordon, but everybody at my wrestling school was calling me Flip. And that was like the first nickname I ever really had. And so I kind of just, I was in the car one day with one of my buddies from practice and I was like, Flip Gordon. I was like, I kind of like that. And I was like, I was just afraid of getting pigeonholed. Um were doing flips you know and right, so i was like right. oh maybe travis flip gordon and so i went by travis flip gordon for a while because flip was really just the first nickname i ever had and i really wanted to use it because of that and because of flash gordon being a superhero i was like it does kind of sound superhero-ish yeah. and so eventually i ended up i was like no it's too long and i just dropped it and now i'm flip gordon so <laughs> so something that I've noticed as a big Ring of Honor fan, I, I look forward to watching the TV show. And sometimes the segments that really are awesomely done maybe don't get the respect that they should get online um, versus maybe the live show of Ring of Honor. But a segment you did, the initial segment when Bully Ray approached you, was mm-hmm. one of the best and most compelling things Ring of Honor put on television in a long time. I watched that thing probably five times over because I thought it just came off so well. Uh, thoughts on the initial confrontation with the one and only Bully Ray? 
Um, it's really cool to be able to work with him because he's a Hall of Famer and he's been around a very long time and he knows a lot of stuff. Um, so to be able to work with him is a, is a huge honor and I've learned so much very quickly. Um, and it's different from anything that I've ever done before. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of realism to it, which is what allows the fans to, to be able to react and get attached and actually care about what me and him are doing. Um, because anybody can relate to a bully. Every, I mean, I don't know if everybody's been bullied, but a lot of people have been bullied, and they can relate to that. And um, it's it's storytelling, and it's what I'm. I really want to learn. It's what I'm. I'm what this business is um, built on is storytelling, not just the wrestling. And so I'm really excited uh, to be able to do this segment with them and see where it goes. Absolutely, and. Uh... It's pretty cool. You know you're getting it over when you got guys like Colt Cabana and Ian Riccoboni on commentary. They're they're loving it. They're they're buying into it full circle and selling the story. So it's, well, it's coming easier, off really well, it's great. Well, it's easier to tell a story when it's real and you know, they're able to put real emotion into it, and that's what we're able to do. Very cool. So kind of a goofy question, and I'll, I'll tell you this. I asked this of uh, – uh, um, a valet from back in the day when Dusty slapped her. If it was, if it was a hard slap, and she kind of made me feel like a jerk for asking. But I'll, I'll ask it this way anyway, even though I expect to get the same result. Um, Bowie has taken to cheap shotting you in a specific way, uh, low blows. Um, does it suck having to take those nearly every time you guys face face off? Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody wants to get hit in the balls, but I think it's just a, a testament up to who his character is. Um, if he wants to hit me from behind, I mean, that just shows that he's too scared to do it to my face. So um, we'll see what happens uh, in the next uh, month or so. Um, but I'm watching my back because now I know he likes to jump me from behind. Absolutely. All right, so a few months ago we had on a guy you faced actually a few months ago, which was Nick Aldis, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. And one of the coolest things that came out of that interview was we were talking about him working for one of my local promotions out here in Arizona, and he says, it's cool because I'm working to the camera. And I've heard you say this in another interview, that it was a skill you had to learn. How much of a transition is it to go from working independent shows to being on a show where you know you got a, you got a camera and a TV audience to play to? Um, at first it's very nerve wracking and it's very overwhelming. I remember when I first got to ROH, even though I felt like I was having good matches on the Indies, I didn't feel like I was having good matches in ring of honor because I was overthinking too many things. I remember my first, I had my second match with ring of honor and the booker pulled me aside and he's like, there's cameras out there. You know that, right? And I'm like, Oh crap. I'm so sorry. I'm just like, I was just overthinking everything. Um, but now you just learn how to call your matches to the cameras. Like, like I know like certain moves, I need to be in a certain buckle. So I know how to get there, uh, through my movements and through my moves, um, to make sure that I'm in the right spot where I need to be. And that just comes with time that comes with learning. Eventually it almost becomes second nature. You just learn how to bump and feed to a certain side, you know? Very cool. And I mentioned Nick Aldis, so I guess I'll ask you about that match. How cool was it to be in the ring with the NWA World Heavyweight Champion? Uh, it was it was really cool, and it was a really cool experience because I had a I had a a championship shot, uh, uh, a once in a lifetime opportunity at the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, um, and I had probably the most eyes on me that I'm ever going to have until Madison Square Garden. You know, I mean. Mm-hmm. There were so many people watching this match. There's so much hype around that match. And people wanted to see, is Flip Gordon going to be all in? Is Flip Gordon going to be the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion? Um, and there was so much on the line, and it was such a huge match for me. And I was very proud of that match um, because I think it was one of the best matches I've had this year. Um, so it was, a, it was a huge match for me, and although the outcome didn't come out like I had hoped, um, it was still a huge learning experience, and it, it was something that I'll, I'll remember for a very, very long time. Very cool. And you mentioned All In, and uh, for obvious reasons, I'm going to keep it more to ROH, but I wanted to ask you about the, the campaign that you've been on, the book flip 
uh, campaign, which has really caught on. You've got merchandise out there for that, and it's really cool. And the fans really have reacted to it. They've been chanting it. Thoughts on the simplicity of some things getting over, like book flip, versus going out there and killing yourself? It's been crazy because everywhere I go now, I hear I hear the the chant book flip, and and it's it's on shows that I'm not even on. I was in Japan for Best of Super Juniors, and Ring of Honor was doing their United tour, and the fans were chanting book flip every time Cody was on TV, every time he was <laughs> out there for a segment, they were chanting book flip, and so it's really cool to see that a uh, book flip. I guess some people are saying it's a movement. Um, it's really cool to see how far it has grown. Like you said, I've, I have merch that's selling uh, with book flip on it. You look on TV, you see book flip shirts everywhere. Um, it's It's been really cool. It's been really special, but it hasn't gotten me booked yet. And so I'm still not all in. I'm not on the biggest independent wrestling show of all time. And so it, it's, it's kind of frustrating because, yeah, I mean, the book flip movement has been really cool. But it, I feel like it has to pay off. I still have to get booked. Um, but I'm still going to be in Chicago. Um, I, I'm having an all-out pre-show party uh, in the parking lot. Um, it sold out uh, in a little under two hours, 2,000 tickets. So I'm still going to come to Chicago. I'm still going to have fun. Um, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to still get booked for All In because I want to be on that show. Um, I think it would mean a lot to Ring of Honor to have one of their superstars, another one of their superstars represented on the show. So, Very cool. I agree. And you mentioned ticket sales. And when you say ticket sales, that comes to mind. What comes to mind is something you brushed on briefly earlier, which was the Madison Square Garden joint show between Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm a guy who grew up in New Jersey I've been to many a wrestling match, all WWE, but I've been to many a wrestling match in the Mecca, in Madison Square Garden. And when those tickets sold out in under an hour, my jaw dropped. Um, thoughts on the immense popularity of Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling and the ability to sell out Madison Square Garden the way you guys did? It is just insane. Um, just because, Just to think of performing in Madison Square Garden not even just from a professional wrestling standpoint, but from an entertainer standpoint. Anybody from basketball to comedy to music to wrestling um, to theater, they want to perform in Madison Square Garden. That is the world's most famous arena. Like you said, it is the Mecca. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that I get to perform inside that arena is a dream come true, and I can't wait. I wish it was April already. Um, but I mean, that's a little ways away, but for Madison, for Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling to, to put on a, a co-show, uh, the G1 Supercard and to sell it out that quick is a testament to how popular wrestling is right now and how much of a variety there is out there because wrestling fans want something different that you can have a, you can have a WWE show across town and still have another non WWE show sell out in the same city. You know, there's so much variety right now. And it's so cool to see how cool and how good wrestling is thriving right now. And it seems like ring of honor is really at that forefront. You guys had 6,000 that super card of honor. Um, I know that you guys are doing a Vegas show. I believe it's in September and you're playing a much bigger venue than you had played the last time you were in Vegas. Thoughts on the immense growth of Ring of Honor and how you guys have managed to stay on the forefront of all the the new eyeballs on professional wrestling? I think the guys that we have in the locker room right now just want to do something different. We want to go out there and we want to steal the show every single night. And uh, we want to put on the best professional wrestling that we can just because we're not where everybody says is the top company. We don't, we don't listen to that. We, we believe that we can be the top company. We believe that we can put on the top matches. And that's, I think that's what fans are getting behind is because they want something different. They want to see, it's like that rock star mentality. They want to see somebody do it from the ground up, you know? Yeah, I agree. And like I've, I've told people this before, I mean, you know, in 2002, I was struggling. I was struggling because I was a wrestling fan, but my two companies closed, ECW and WCW. They were no more and never really was a WWE guy. So 
you know, Impact was my first one, and then Ring of Honor won me over very shortly thereafter. And you guys are both, both companies doing immense things right now. So it's awesome to see. There's lots of companies doing great things right now, and I'm, I'm happy for everybody because it just means more jobs for professional wrestlers, which means more places to perform. So the more yeah. the merrier, in my opinion. And I mentioned Impact and Ring of Honor, and I will guess that leads me to my next question, which is something you're also booked on, which is the Jericho Cruise, the Rock and Rager. Um, are you looking forward to seeing what happens when Impact and Ring of Honor go head-to-head? Oh, absolutely. I'm I'm excited. I mean, I've never been on a cruise before, so to say that my first cruise uh, is because of wrestling is really cool. Um, this year's been insane, um, and then you just throw a cruise on top of it. Um, I'm excited. I don't know how it's really going to work because boats are on water, water moves, which <laughs> means the ring is probably moving, so I don't know how it's going to work with all my my flips and flying, but I will figure it out. I am excited. Um there's a couple guys I would love to wrestle from Impact on there, maybe Brian Cage or a match I've been trying to get for quite some time against John Morrison. Um, I guess I'll just call those two guys out right now. I'd love to work with them on the cruise if possible. Very cool. All right. So just a few more questions and I'll let you go. I did my research leading into this interview, and I heard in a prior interview from last year one of your goals was working in Japan. You wanted to work for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Not only did you, as part of the Ring of Honor joint show, but you also were a part of the Super Juniors tournament. Was that an awesome experience? Did it live up to your expectation? Oh, absolutely. It was uh, beyond my wildest dreams. It was so much fun. Um, and it's crazy how much you learn over there during a tour like that because you're able to get advice and feedback after every single match and apply it the very next day because you're wrestling almost every single day over there. Awesome, so awesome. it's really it's really cool to get the feedback and from everybody and to work different guys, different nationalities, um, different styles, um, and then like I said, get that feedback and be able to apply it super quick. Where sometimes like if I like if I'm over here in the states and I get feedback on a Sunday, I'm not able to apply that feedback until the following Friday when I have a show again. So over in, when you're on these tours in Japan, Mexico, it's really cool being able to learn super quick. Very cool. Kind of a random question I'll throw in there. Is there much of a wrestling scene from where you're from in Montana? No, I'm actually here right now, and um, there's not much of a wrestling scene. Um, I actually wrestled here for the first time ever uh, a few months ago for Defy Wrestling out of uh, Seattle, Tacoma area. Um, and then I think Big Time comes here now once a year for like a three-day tour in the bigger cities. Um, but in Kalispell, where I'm from, no professional mm-hmm. wrestling has ever come here. Um, maybe someday I'll I'll throw a one-time show over right, here. You so never know. <laughs> my goal is not to ask the same questions as prior interviews, but you told a story on one that I'm going to ask you about since you mentioned that Defy show. Um, do, you, do you enjoy soda during a match? <laughs> I do not enjoy soda, but apparently my grandmother um, was really into the match and thought that Matthew Riddle... Um, was hurting me, which he was, to be fair, and uh, she decided to try to save me, and she threw a soda can at him. But she hit me. (laughs) That's a bad aim for Grandma. Sorry about that. All right, final question for you. Um, You've pretty much set your goals all along, and you've met those goals more or less. Thoughts on your future goals still in professional wrestling as Ring of Honor heads towards the Madison Square Garden show? And beyond. Oh gosh. Um, well, I'm. Re- I want to finish this this thing that I have with Bully Ray. Uh, I want to squash that, get that out of the way, deal with that, and then I think, you know, I think I may have been in Ring of Honor for a year. I just resigned, so I think I'm ready for maybe a maybe a TV title run. Maybe I'm I in the champ right now. You know. Yeah, Punishment Martinez better look out. Looks like it might be a. That would be interesting to see you guys. I think I think I think that's I mean I think that's definitely a goal of mine uh, within the next year. Um, would love to be more full time with New Japan. Would love to travel more internationally. Um, but I'm very excited because I mean it's I mean it's this this whole tr- journey for me has been super quick and so it's been a fast ride, but I've enjoyed it. 
Very cool. So I, I, I tell a lie. This will be my last question. Then I have one last favor from you. Um, and it's kind of a random one that just came to mind. I told you I love watching Ring of Honor TV, and I do. But there's no set schedule for it. I get it on Nessen, which is on DirecTV. It's from Boston area, even though I'm out in Arizona. Um, are you guys eyeing up a national TV deal? So it's, you know, Ring of Honor, Friday at 8 or something like that. Is that something that you think would benefit the company or with honor club is that kind of a passe thing now i think it would benefit the company greatly whether there's uh, a new channel or a new time slot in the plans i'm not sure um the easiest way i watch is on the fight tv app every monday at 7 p.m eastern time that's awesome and yeah i don't i'm uh I'm old school. <laughs> I like to watch things on a TV screen. Yeah, right, I don't so even which... I don't even have cable. So I just bought a TV for the first time in four years. So I don't even have cable. Very cool. All right, see, so I am old school. I'm I'm way out of the loop here. Um, so yeah, you can see Flip Gordon on Ring of Honor Television on various platforms. Search your cable provider. You'll see great matches like the one this week. He takes on Silas Young. Definitely gonna want to see that. Lots of great stuff. So I thank you for joining me. Before I let you go, one last favor from you. Do you mind if I get a radio ID just saying this is Flip Gordon and you're in the Wrestling Epicenter? Absolutely. Wrestling Epicenter? Wrestling Epicenter. Yes, sir. This is Flip Gordon and you are in the Wrestling Epicenter. Beautiful man. I thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I got to be honest, I was nervous going into this one because uh, Mark had said that you didn't like being asked all the same questions. So I went out and I listened to like 10 different interviews you did to try to avoid covering all the same ground. No, I appreciate it. No, I just get like a legit get asked the same question sometimes. And it's so brutal when you do, because I legit do two to three interviews a day sometimes. So oh, when man. I'm getting asked the same question, it's almost like I'm on autopilot. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. not it's not as fun where because like t like this we were interacting you asked different questions like on the fly like mm -hmm. it was fun it was easy I just hate the ones where it's like you could have you know went and read my Twitter to get a question you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> well I appreciate it man and I I hope I did an okay job and uh, thank no, you no you did great it. this was a lot of fun I really appreciate it I'll put it in a good word for Mark for you all right I appreciate it very much. Have a great rest rest of your week, and I'll be uh, I'll be tuning in to All In. Hopefully, you'll show up on there. Yeah, you never know. I mean, I'm still trying. There's, you never know until the last last bell rings. There's a chance. This is the wrestling epicenter. For over 15 years, we've brought you the top names in professional wrestling for exclusive interviews. Everybody you see here has been interviewed by our site. But we're more than just interviews. So be sure and check out WrestlingEpicenter.com for news, results, information, and of course our store. WrestlingEpicenter.com, your number one source for wrestling information.